Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, and NBs, and thank you for tuning back into St. Andrew TV, a cure for your Monday blues. I am, of course, your host, Andrew, and today we're going to start another mini-series called Wild West Hat Spotlight. And as you can see, the spotlight is going to be directed towards the derby hat now all this is going to be is basically taking hats from my collection telling you the origins of said hat and then running through mine it's going to be pretty simple and i hope it's also going to be educational because we all see the hats in the movies and the recreations and all that stuff but do we really know where the hat came from so i come in and i will bridge that gap for you so without further ado here is the derby hat and on the corner has a wagon like us Hit me on my barn a prepaid wireless We pack and deliver like UPS trucks Already gonna hell just pumping that gas All I wanna do is And uh, ching and uh, take your money All I wanna do is And uh, ching and uh, take your money Now, the original name for this hat was actually called The Cook, and it was invented in 1849 in London, England. And that was the name of the wealthy landowner and noblesman, Cook. Well, spelled Coke, but it pronounced Cook. And he actually commissioned Lock and Company to design a hat for his gamekeepers. The gamekeepers, of course, were on horseback more times than not, and they kept getting their large stovepipe hats or large top hats kept getting knocked off by low-hanging tree branches. So the idea behind this hat was it to be form-fitting, to have a rounded top with a small brim, to protect the game's keepers from their everyday hazards while doing their job, but would also not lose it while they were doing their job. This was actually a hard hat, so to speak. Now going back to Lock and Company, they were hatters. And this hat was actually crafted by Thomas and William Bowler, which is why it's commonly referred to as the Bowler over in Europe. The hat rolled out December 17th, 1849, and it took off from there. The Cook or Bowler hat was very prominent and originally meant for the working class. However, with the start of Queen Victoria's reign, it gained a lot of popularity with the higher ups, the more wealthy of society. It was now a hat that would go with a suit and would be associated with wealth. So let's jump across the pond, shall we? Now, obviously, in the United States, this was never called the bowler or the cook hat. It was called the derby. The reason for this was a man by the name of Edward Stanley, the 12th Earl of Derby. He started horse races in 1780. And at these said horse races, or the derby, wealthy men would wear the bowler hat or the cook hat. The U.S. also had horse races during this time and the wealthy men over there would wear the exact same cook or bowler hat. However, we would associate it with the derby, thus forth known as the derby hat. Side note, the first Kentucky Derby was in 1875. That is a freebie for you. The next one's gonna cost you some money. Now, with you knowing all that information about the derby hat, I would have you know that this was actually the most popular hat on the frontier. A lot of Hollywood cinema would lead you to believe otherwise, but this was the most common. The Derby is the American frontiersman hat. There's only a few select geographical locations in the United States that would choose something other than this. Maybe if you were in West Texas and you needed a wider brim to protect you from the sun. A few notable Old West heroes or villains, I suppose that wore the derby hat were Lawman Bat Masterson, you had Butch Cassidy, and it is even said that Doc Holliday would sport the bowler instead of what Tombstone would have you to believe. He was a gambling man and also a townsman. So it makes sense he would sport the derby hat instead of anything else. With that being said, let's discuss mine. This is actually a high derby hat, and I apologize if my hair is acting out of turn. So the difference between a high derby hat and a normal derby hat is mine is a six inch crown with a two and three quarters inch pencil curled brim with a binded edge and we also have 
this really nice inch and a half gross grain ribbon. It's small and compact, while as the traditional boulder would be a four inch crown with a two and one quarter inch pencil curled brim with a binded edge. That would be a little more form fitting. It is definitely a sharp looking hat without a shadow of a doubt. And you can see why it was very popular amongst all civilians in the West. There's not a lot of upkeep that you need to have with it. It was a very universal hat, I would have to say as well. You could wear it out on horseback traveling through you know, the Arizona desert, or you could be wearing it in town, maybe in San Francisco or another place that would be very cosmopolitan. So with that being said, this is the Derby hat, and I hope you guys learned something today. And if not, I hope I refreshed your memory. This is definitely the first part of the series that I would like to continue on, giving you a bit of a backstory about common hats of the frontier and Victorian era. Please leave a like if you've liked the video or leave me a comment telling me what I should do next. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed as of late. I really do appreciate it and we are growing at quite a rapid pace. So thank you again. But for those of you who have come across this video and have yet to hit that subscribe button, think about doing so because you're a daisy if you do.